Next up. Next up, we're gonna put some coolant and fuel lines underneath the car that are made out of aluminum, which are these right here, because I already had these from the Turk street car previously. Um, I actually have two sets of different fuel lines, so I think we made a set and then changed something and then made a new set. So these would be the Dash 6 fuel lines made out of aluminum tube. And then these are the water lines with Dash 16 uh, vibrant weld bumps welded onto them. Um, so this is what we use to run underneath the car so that we don't have to run a soft hose uh, or an AN hose, which could potentially get damaged or pinched or something. So, you know, if you smash the bottom of the car and go off track, at least the aluminum might crush, but a much harder time piercing it and, you know, creating a leak. So that's why we do the aluminum. And it's super light, it's probably as light or lighter than an AN line, probably. Oh yeah, that fits nice. And then this goes to the AN lines that go up to the front, the motor that will be up here. And then we gotta weld our, gotta mount the electric water pump kind of in this area somewhere underneath. And then those will get connected to that and routed up here on top of the subframe. We'll have two bulkhead AN fittings that come up and then go through the firewall into the radiator. It's kind of the gist of it. So these are two fuel lines. We have a dash 10 and a dash eight. Could you, it's pretty, let's move this over a little bit more. No, Probably, I think, what I are you think, trying to? I think I could just weld a piece across the top of them and have a hole right here and just put the four nuts. Okay. That's, that would be the easiest. Yeah. But it, nah, it doesn't really need to be bent anymore. I mean, it could be a little bit. Yeah, maybe we could bend just the one some, this one. Well, they're staggered so it's yeah, easy but, to get the fittings on. Yeah, but if but it's here, it's better. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, this could definitely go up. It's been this. All right, we got a three quarter pipe and a one inch die, but it's aluminum and we only have to bend it a couple more degrees. So this is one of the fuel lines. What we're trying to do is just angle it up a little bit more so it has a better position going into the engine bay and, um, so that the AN line can have a better direction going up to the fuel rail, uh, which should just make it a little cleaner in the engine bay. Keep it up out of the way a little bit better. I think it should bend like a tiny bit. Oh yeah, they'll easily bend. I just hope it doesn't kink. The vice. Yeah, it's it fine. Well, that's good. No, it's all right. Yeah, no, it's good. That should be enough. Thought we had a three quarter die. Turns out we got inch and inch and a quarter. Just that little bit though, it should be plenty. Yeah, that's pretty good. Can go, yeah. I mean, you, I don't know if you want to go much more. You can do both of them. Because then it might be getting up oh, into yeah. this spot. But yeah, you could definitely go more on this. That's good. Is it angled okay? Well, we can figure out. We'll reason. figure that out after. Yeah, I just need to see where to weld. So first stage is to connect these two fuel lines together because uh, they were cut apart previously. So now I'm just gonna lay a couple beads, just to tie them up. They're already angled at a nice spot so that we can get AN lines on them front and back, nice and easy. We just 
have to space it. What? We just basically have to space it enough for like a 10 millimeter socket to get it. Measurements. Those are for the studs underneath the car. So Dom's gonna space those accordingly on the pipe and then uh, weld the tabs on or the strap. And everything should just theoretically push right up, bolt it right up, good to go. Easy peasy. Moment of truth. One, two, three, oh, four. Damn. Dude. <laughs> perfect. Freaking Dom spec, dude. Nice. All right, do some finish welding. I'll bolt that sucker straight in. Really like when a plan comes together. Got the nutty boys. Oh yeah, nice fitment. Nice and tight. Turk. Ooh, it's a little tight. Turk, have you got any comments yet about how Don does all the work and you just want to go for all the Obviously. And then you step in and do like one. Look what I'm doing bolt. right now though. I got a camera in my hand and I'm turning a freaking socket. That's multitasking. <laughs> do you know how, how hard it is to frame a GoPro yeah. shot? It's because the, uh, the floor is not flat there. Yeah, the easy on those threads. I'm not hitting the first one. All right, that actually worked out pretty good. Ooh, that's a hard spot. Well, fits like a glove, dude. Dom spec all the way. How about that water pump? For those of you who don't know, this is a, an external water pump. They are made in all shapes and sizes. Uh, this is a Davies Craig. I forget what size it is. Oh, it's an EWP 150. This is what this is what we have been running um, on the street car and the pro car for the last three or four years. And it's uh, treated us pretty well. Um, we change them out every season just to make sure that we don't have any issues. We did have one of them die on us, but it was on a street car and I let it run a little bit too long. Um, so they do last a while, but you definitely should swap them out and they're relatively cheap. Um, I think around 200 to 250 bucks, which isn't terrible as a, um, you know, a maintenance cost for each season, just to make sure that your car is on point. You need a little bit more water pump with these rear mounted radiators to help flow the water. So you can't really rely on just the engine's water pump because uh, it's, it's not used to circulating that far and that much volume. So um, these pumps do a good job. And you can regulate them with the Motex. So you can kind of turn the frequency up like a dimmer switch to um, make them flow faster and slower. So you can control the speed, which is cool as well for like its maximum cooling situation. Or on startup, you can let it run really slow to help heat the water up a lot faster. And then when it gets hot, you kind of crank it up. Oh, that'd be nice. And it would just be easy, but 
Well, one of them. It'd be nice to run it like that. I got a tight 92 if we want to shoot it that way, but I don't know how this, the plumbing's really going to go yet. Well, if we had a. Well, what we could actually do, too, we could weld these together. Oh, yeah? These are any. Got, I guess I only have this one. I thought I ordered more. This is a tight radius 90. Not even radius, it's just straight off, pretty nice. So when you're doing plumbing, it's very, very nice to have a, a large assortment of AN fittings. Thankfully, Vibrant has taken care of me and I've been collecting AN fittings and line and all that stuff over the past few seasons of FD because we always need spares. So I have quite the assortment now, which is pretty dope. This is kind of a track one. This has kind of all the fittings from the pro car. Uh, some dash four, six, 12, um, like some more 12, some 10, 16, 16. We run dash 16 for all the water and coolant plumbing. Uh, dash 10 for most of the fuel and dash six for the fuel. And then a catch can for dash 10. Um, and I forget the rest. Some dash four. Uh, in there somewhere dash six for the coolant lines on the turbo dash 10 for the drain on the turbo uh, All of that. So that's kind of the large assortment that I have and thankfully vibrant Hooks it up uh, It would get lower as it tucks in too, huh? And then I could just do a little clamp around this around clamp with a bracket to yep. support it Hold on, we're going for it? Yeah. All right, I guess that's it. It's been decided. Executive decision by Dom. obviously too long but we'll just yep. go a little bit shorter to space it off the chassis more not much I mean yeah man. only cut it like a half half an inch three quarters of an inch shorter it's perfect yep So that is the AN fitting with all the paint ground off it, ready to weld to the one inch pipe that we had lying around. That'll then get welded to this other AN fitting. Does that look, does that look level? Yeah, that's pretty level. Yeah. That looks good. Or we could, uh, I mean, it can turn, it could actually well, uh, go yeah, up honestly, over the drive shaft. If we tilted it up a little bit, that'd be nice. Well, is this, this isn't, this pipe isn't hanging down too low, right? No. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, it can tilt easily with the, that's close enough. So hot. That is looking pretty sick, dude. Pretty sick, dude. It's a good spot. So what's the clamp situation gonna be? We could even do it to here, like from here to here. Right. It just needs to stabilize it. Like honestly, if you just so it that, doesn't take the load yeah, on yeah. the pipe. Yeah. This one's better actually because it's a 1.5 exactly. Okay. 
But we could do it on that. We just machine out the clamp a little bit. But it's just inch and a half. So we need to order a clamp from McMaster so we can finish the uh, mounting of the water pump. Uh, Cause we don't want it to just take all the load on this pipe. Inch and a half shaft collar for the electric water pump. Dom's got something good cooking up over here. That looks good. The welds better with stainless. Ah, oh, huh. Some of metal. Nice and tidy, tidy.